Bedford. I know what you were born here. So you've been here the whole time? Yes. Huh? Yeah, 86. 86 years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, were you, you were born on the Daniels Farm? Yes, I was. Daniels yeah. Farm? Is that um, Daniels Farm Road? Yes. Has that always been Daniels Farm Road? No. Mm -hmm. They didn't have names until it was just a highway. Oh, okay. Highway 4, I believe. Highway 4 or something yeah, like then, that. Yeah. Mm. And your, your school was? Hastings, Hastings School on Simpson Brook Road. On Simpson Brook Road. Yeah. Mm. And did you have brothers and sisters? I had one brother and two sisters. Uh, my brother's was Glenn. Um, my, one of, my oldest sister was Lucille. And then Marjorie. Marjorie just died a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. We've, she went to Connecticut and she moved back to Waterford. And did you go to high school at the academy? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All so, four years. All four years. Yeah. At that point, they didn't have a bus and we couldn't drive every day. My folks couldn't take me, so I had to live in town oh, in St. Johnsbury. Oh. And the, live with the family? Uh, the first year I lived with, the uh, first two years I lived with my sister outside on the Danville Road. And then the last two years I lived with Murdy Cushman, who lives, she did live uh, by the pipe plant. There was a house. And uh, they moved to St. Jay, and her husband worked for uh, Paulson's. So I. They were, took me in, and they were very, very good. I worked in Malton Snack Shop, so I didn't have any meals with them. I didn't eat any at school, yeah. during high school. Oh, really? Yeah, and I was supposed to get just two meals from Malton's. <laughs> after I'd been there for a little, because I worked for them, and after I'd been there for not even a week, Mr. Malton says, you can have your third meal here, too, if you want. <laughs> They were awful good to me. There was a man and his wife, my entire Morton. Uh, what did you do after high school? Got married. You got married? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I graduated in June and was married in September. Mm. To whom? Oh, Russell Davis, who lived in Waterford. And he was a schoolmate? Well, he was eight years older than I, so when I was in the first grade, he was in the eighth grade. And used to get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I would um, sit in the front and he'd sit in the back across the room and I'd look around at him and he'd wink. <laughs> well, I winked with both eyes. And to him, that was hilarious. <laughs> but my first grade teacher was, didn't know little kids and oh, I put in a terrible year that year. She had spent most of my time head on my desk. <laughs> Or I stay in recesses until the older, older kids decided that I wasn't going to stay in recesses all the time. They said, if she stays in, we stay in. And we won't be very nice either. And so she began. And I think my mother must have had something to do about it too, because my sister was in the seventh grade. So, how many kids were in that school room? Oh my goodness. Probably eight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was, I had another little girl that was with me, and Mom said I did a lot better until she moved the middle of the year. Mm -hmm. She went to, her folks moved, and so she went with them, and I just seemed to lose it. But it was hard for me to learn. <clears throat> I think I had a little um, dyslexia. dyslexia, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, when you um, were first married, where did you live? Did you we live had an apartment for a short time. Then my father died in. We were married in September. My father died in February, and we moved up to the farm to mm -hmm. for my husband to work mm -hmm. with the, my brother. And then in fifty fifty two, we bought a house in, down near Pesumpsic, but it was still in Waterford mm -hmm. on Route 5. And Russ was at that point working at the corner garage for 
Pat's department, um, or quantifies uh, where off in Hastings Hill and Railroad Street. Do you have children? Do I? Yes. Yes, I had seven. You had seven? I've got five living. Yeah. Do they live around here? Uh, just two of them. Two of them. Yeah, yeah, my two oldest. The other three went out west. Oh. The oldest one's, I call him Ted, it's Thomas. Uh, his sister's Kathleen, Kathy. And I had waited five years and had Stephen. Another five years and had Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> I did have miscarriage in between. Had Glenn and then Susan and Paul, twins. We lost the boy and Amy. Did you, um, did you and your husband participate in like town, town government or? Uh, Russell was slight man for 12 years. 12 years. Yeah. And I would help with the school and the PTA. Mm. <clears throat> what was it like for him to be in politics? It was okay until the state stepped in. <laughs> they could do what, you know, what needed to be done. And Russ, finally, he said after the last few years, he said, I can't do any more. Did he so, get a lot of phone calls, like, at night? No, he didn't. Really? No, not too bad. More from the garage than he did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the loggers would break down, and they'd call, and needed parts. And so he was a mechanic for... He Most could be, life. but he was Pat's, took care of the Pat's department mm -hmm. for the mechanics. Mm -hmm. He was there, I don't know, he went through about 30 buses. Because <laughs> that garage changed hands a lot. <clears throat> and where he went that? in 46, and I think it was seven, 85 that Wayne, when Wayne Ford took over, he told, gave him two hour notice and said, that's it. Mm. Oh, it was, and he was 55, oh boy. Oh. That was hard, and he had all these kids, because we had three foster children. We, his brother had died, and, and the mother had died earlier, so we took the three kids, and it was that's quite a blow. Hard. He didn't even know what was gonna happen. So did you have um, all seven of the others at the same time, or I mean, when I had three of those. Well, Ted the was in the service; he'd gone overseas, mm -hmm. and Kathy was married, but then she moved back home with her little one. <laughs> wow! Yeah, <laughs> but they cool. kind of had a little apartment by their own, so. <laughs> Whoa! It was hectic. We had our own cow. We had our own pigs. We had our own beef. Because when the cow would have a mm -hmm. steer, we'd mm -hmm. butcher it. You get a, you get attached to those. Yeah. <laughs> the last time we about the last time that we, I was pregnant with the uh, the twins. And I told Russell I'd get attached to the steer, and I said, "You tell when he comes after him that I can't help load him because I've always helped load the others." <clears throat> so I watch in the window, and pretty soon I see him come into the door. The man said, Mrs. Davis, will you come out and help us, Lord? <laughs> so I went out, and I said, come on, Ferdinand, and I walked into the truck or the trailer, and he followed me right in. And <laughs> So then when the first meal we had of Hamburg, I said to Russ, I said, now you don't, we won't say anything about this being Ferdinand so they, because of the kids. He said, okay. <clears throat> so we started to eat. Pretty soon when the kids piped up, is this Ferdinand? <laughs> they didn't care, but I did. <laughs> oh dear. After Russell lost his job, how did you how did you guys manage? Well, Warren 
Mr. Warren had a garage on Warren's flat. I think it's where Webb is now, mm -hmm. Webb. And so he said, to, he called Russ right up. He says, I need a man. He says, I know you're good. He says, will you come and help? And uh, so Russ did. And, uh, but <sighs> Tap and Die was, um, Northeast Tool was a spinoff from Tap and Die, and they were looking for help, so Russ decided he'd go there where he could have more, get a little pension and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he did. He gave us notice, and he said, oh, he says, I don't want to lose you. <laughs> I asked Mr. Warren one time, I said, would Russell do something that would make Wayne can him, and he said, no. He says, Russell would not do a thing. He'd just do what he was supposed to do, and, but it was money. They, he didn't want to pay him what he was getting, and he had a car to drive. I had a demo, and he didn't. So I never, he called me at three. He had said at noon, don't wait supper, you feed the kids, and because I'm going to take inventory. About three o'clock, phone rang. It was Russ, and he said, "Pick me up at five. I says, "What?" Because he had a truck to do, pick up. And yeah, he said, "You pick me up at five. And I said, "You haven't been canned, have you?" Joking. He said, "Yes." <laughs> I still didn't believe it until I picked him up, and he come out with his toolbox that he had, did he, his personal things look on his face was, yeah. But we get through it. What type of cows did they have on the farm? Jersey. Jersey? They had set, my brother was just getting them bred so that it would be full-blooded Jerseys mm -hmm. when he died. Mm -hmm. And we were going to, supposed to put in a bulk tank because they had, at that point, we just go in cans and putting them in the cooler. But the state was going to make them put in bulk tanks. And they were debating because the road went between the two bands. And at that point, and they didn't know where they'd put it. And then they decided where. And then he died. He dropped dead. He, he dropped with a heart attack. Mm -hmm. They got him in the house, but he didn't live. So he was only 43. Yeah. Then they sold everything. Russ and I thought we might want to take it over, but my uncle and, and my mother said, no, we're going to sell. So they had an auction. And, and what year was that? Do you remember? 59. Mm -hmm. Stephen was two. He was born 57. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the cows went? Yeah, they the auctioned house. them, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Local farmers bought some, I know Locke Matthew bought two or three, or maybe more, I don't know. I didn't go to the auction. I, then their equipment, too, was sold. My mother called, and I oh know my sister called, and uh, Russ answered the phone about 6.30 in the morning, and he come up to the bedroom, he says, Glenn died. And I said, you mean Carl? Because my uncle had had it had heart trouble. No, Glenn. I said, well, Glenn who? <laughs> I couldn't believe that I'd seen him Sunday, and he was perfectly all right, and this was probably about Wednesday. Then my mother found a man that she had known from Concord when she was a girl. And that was strange, because one day I heard this man, I was up, keep, my aunt, mother go, always went down to Laconia, to see her sister once a year. So she went down, <clears throat> and so I went up and kept the house for Uncle Carl. And I heard this man, this man coming through the old entryway, and he rapped, and I didn't know him. He says, oh, he says, is your mother home? I says, no. 
And he said, well, I saw the little toy, that was Stephen, outside playing, he said. And I thought maybe she was babysitting. And I said, no. I said, he told me who he was, mail carrier. And <laughs> he had gone down Duck Pond Road and scooted up to <laughs> see her. And uh, <laughs> so he, I told him, I said, well, she'll be home such and such a time, so give her a call. So he did. But golly, they got married after a fashion. <laughs> and she had a good life with him. She didn't have to work as hard. And she, she never traveled with my folks. If, if Dad went anywhere, Uncle Carl went. They were just like, they were just, oh, dear. oh it was something. But Mom put up with it, I you know. know. And Dad was good, good to her. But if Uncle Carl wanted a firehouse for the fire pump, we had a, had built a pond, and he wanted, and Mom said, I'm getting my kitchen remodeled before. <laughs> That's the only time I think she stuck up the guns. <laughs> and Dad said, okay, and they did both. Yeah. You must have had quite a few acres of farmland. I think there the was 500, 500 in all, acres. yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, did, uh, did anybody do any logging? I don't know. They must have logged off from the first the first part of the property because I've got pictures of the logging and that was about the time they decided to put a sawmill in and it was during the depression and it worked good because people around would bring their logs and Uncle Kyle, he's very very talented with his machinery didn't like cattle so so he wouldn't farm that way, but he took care of the machinery. Mm -hmm. And the horses, when they had horses, he loved horses. Mm -hmm. Did they use the sawmill for anything else? Make cider. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. Of course, some of it, my mom would say, I'm having my vinegar. If you don't have your <laughs> yeah, cider. <laughs> yeah. So did you have an apple orchard? They just got wild apples off wow. all over where there was trees. Mm. Yeah. Did some years were good and some weren't. Did they do any maple sugaring? Oh, that kept them going during the Depression. Yeah. They had a big sugar orchard. And <clears throat> Uncle Carl there again, he would drive the horses, and Glenn, Brother Glenn would gather, and my father would boil. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, in the spring of the year, when it was so muddy, Simpson Brook Road got all oh, terrible. You couldn't go over it with a car, and uh, it would flood over the river. The brook would flood over, so we'd have to walk down from Simpson's, where Dr. Turek lives, down to the school, which was about a mile. They had their own gasoline pump. Yeah, Whoa. that was uh, that's another thing. My uncle was very very good at, you know, anything come out, he had it. And uh, during the Depression, it worked good because because their farm machinery, that there was machinery for farming, so they were not Depression so much as the war. They, gasoline was rationed, mm -hmm. but we always had plenty. We could use it for, we only went down once a week. So got groceries. Big trucks come and bring the gasoline to your yep. tank. Yeah, it was a big tank. It's up. Well, it was up in the field. That's, I don't know where it is now. I guess. <laughs> but back in the old days, they didn't think about. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Leaks. Leaks and stuff. How did you get to town? What route? Went down Donald's Farm Road, mm -hmm. by the red to the radio station down Concord Avenue. And if it was muddy, I remember one time we had to leave the car, but we couldn't make it all the way home. So we carried the groceries. And <laughs> Did they ever quarry slate from Oh, car? that's another thing. They quarried slate. Oh. Yeah. So we never was during the Depression like some people because we had the slate and the sugaring. Mm -hmm. I remember when... Maple syrup went from three, two dollars a gallon to three, and my father was a stat. Oh, he was so happy. 
oh, that was really. <laughs> and so where was your sugar house? Is, is it's about where Ken Keach's house is now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess Ken was maping, using the maple. Uncle Kyle told him he could make his, make maple syrup. And so he left the arch, the sugar and off arch, and uh, Dad had always worried for fear it would catch fire. And he'd go out and check it at night after. But boy, one night it burned. So, what happened to the horses on the farm? Did they did they die on the farm, or they just sold? Them? I think they just sold them. I don't remember only one that had to be put down on the farm. And that was my uncle. I called him my uncle Dan. He was an older man. He was my father's cousin, I believe. And he he used to go to work. He worked down the Fairbanks' foundry, and he'd drive in the summer. He'd drive to work and back. Oh, on the horse and buggy? Yeah, yeah. the horse and buggy. In the winter, he'd, he'd uh, I don't know if he ever had a license. I don't think he did. At the barn to table, you made a punch, didn't you? Yes. So can you tell us the history of that punch? And I don't know where my mother got the recipe, but she got it for us girls' weddings. Oh. My sister was married in... August, and I was married in September, of course. There again, I had to keep up with the other two girls. <laughs> no, but Russ, Russ was older, so he eight years older, so we decided we better get married. So I don't know where she got the recipe. Mom was busy that fall. Because everybody got married. Everybody was getting married. <laughs> <laughs> At the farm, you, you got married? Madge, Madge was married in the house, in the living room, and I was married out under the trees, which some of them are gone now, most of them are. But I had an arch, and I was married sep September 25th. Pretty time of the year. It was, but you know, it was had the woman that, um, very artistic she was, Mrs. Jenny Hastings, and she, to get fall leaves at that time. She had a, didn't think she was going to find enough. It was a beautiful day. So the farm is different now in that the road, well, Slate Ledge Road. Yes. And you also had a barn and a shed. Yes, that, burned. that connected to the house. <clears throat> there again, if um, the whole place would have gone, if it hadn't been for the fire hoses, and we were gone. Russ and I had gone over to Maine because I had to get away because there were so many kids. So every so often he'd, we'd go to Maine. Well, Judge Wesley said it. She says, you go. And so we was, went over and Sunday morning before we came home, phone rang and it was Kathy saying the barn had burned. Whoa. And uh, if S Stephen, oh, he was probably, he might have been in high school but he would go out every week and Saturday he'd go out with his father and start the engine. The old fire, oh, it was an old gasoline engine. And I thought, why are they starting that every week? Made an awful racket. So, but it's a darn good thing he, he knew how to do it because he started it and he got the hoses going. And uh, when Hubert Simons, the fire chief from St. Jay, come around the corner, he's, oh my God, that house, whole place is going. But when he got around, he saw the hose, the water hoses. He kept it under control until. Okay. So those hoses were, were your hoses, not the fire department. Yeah, we we um, we had the whole the fire department. I think we was going to get a new engine, so we bought that from them, and the hoses I think we got from them. So we did. We had everything. You had your pond. Yeah, that's when they put that pond, those three ponds in, and the was one of them. The back one by the house was for that protection. Mm. There again, my uncle 
Carl. Yeah, huh? he thought of these things, you know. He didn't work hard, but, <laughs> but he, he kept things going. And sold it. Mom, one year, well, more than one year, she, they had lumbered over on the hovey place, we called it. That's over back, facing her, hers. And <clears throat> Mom would go over, she and Mrs. Hooley, who lived neighbor, they'd pick raspberries and she'd take them down. That's how we kids got our shoes. She'd take them down and sell them on. I don't know, probably to the grocer, I'm not sure. But they sold potatoes to a lot of people in town, bushel mm -hmm. time. But the raspberries went into shoes. Yep, and we had plenty to eat, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. In the winter, we'd move downstairs, All and and that would, the heat from the old furn wood furnace would keep us warm. It would be cold sometimes, but when Dad got up in the morning, he'd stoke keep it stoke up. it up. Yeah, all we had was a register in my father, in my mom's and father's room. But and then my uncle and Glenn's was in the L shape, and they had radiators, old steam radiators. Oh, heated yeah. from a furnace. Yep. Uh huh. Yep. Carl put together? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> to keep himself warm? To keep yeah. himself, the rest of the house didn't get them right. <laughs> yeah, they put one in Glenn's room, and then one in, there was one in Uncle Carl's. He's kind of slept in the hallway, but it was big enough for room. That's what he wanted. And um, we had one in the dining room, living room, and bedroom. I mean, uh, kitchen. Mm -hmm. That's when mom would bring her clothes in, they'd freeze on the line when she washed on Mondays and she put put newspapers. Back then the print I don't, couldn't have been like it is now because she'd lay the clothes over newspapers on the ra register or oh, radiator and then put her, put her clothes over that. Yeah. So they, you outside would dry them out mostly. Yeah, she had the the porch. We had a big porch, and she'd hang them on that, and bring them in. Probably, I don't know if she'd bring them that same day or not. But then she'd put quite a few on bars too, mm -hmm. clothes bars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Didn't have the conveniences we do now. And, and then you gardened, vegetable garden. Yeah, we so. had our vegetable garden. Mom took care of that, mm -hmm. she and us kids. Mm -hmm. They got it in for her, and then mm -hmm. we had to take care of it. And that's where the potatoes came from that you sold? No, well, they had a field. Oh, they had a field? A field for potatoes, oh. yep. In the, in the garden, we would have old radishes and lettuce, carrots, the small. Right. Did you have any other things you grew in the field? Fields of? Besides corn. Potatoes, corn. But mostly that was field corn for the cattle. Mm -hmm. And we used to put it into the silo because the silo is, the top of it's gone in now. But, and I heard they're going to tear down the barn. So, yeah. Oh, I meant to bring that picture so you would see it. A photographer came one time, and I went out to get the mail, and I see this guy down the road. And so I went back in, and he was taking pictures in the fall of the year, and it, the barn and then the trees behind it. And after we moved, the people that lived there, one of their daughters said, told my daughter, you know, there's a picture of your old farm. It was somebody over in Maine. I got his name, and I had three pictures made of it. Yeah, it was. It'd be very nice to have. Yeah. Then you could get a copy of it. Yeah, just a view. Yeah. 
I didn't think it was. <laughs> so Vivian, is there anything else you want to talk about or tell us about? Well, at school we had, we'd go out recess and play in the winter, field and, what do they call it, geese and, fox and geese. Oh, yeah. And, um, now how do you play fox and geese? They have a, a round, you make a round circle. Had like spokes, did they? Something like, Something that. like that. And in the middle was the fox, right? I can't remember the I actual so. game. I think oh. so. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know just how it did work, but I remember that much. We used to skip. Um, skip rope? Yeah, skip rope, and then that uh, hopscotch. Uh -huh. yeah. And then uh, fall and spring, which <laughs> I only fell in once, but they used to jump the stones in the brook. I mean, we could go off. I'll teach us. She didn't care. <laughs> and we'd go in the, the brook. I guess we had teller probably. And the big kids would step stones. Well, I was a little bit small. <laughs> but I only fell in once. It's the Simpsons brook. Yeah. And it was a brook then. It wasn't like it is now. It was a good br big brook. So you had to go back to school with wet clothes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't have any other way. <laughs> and we used to, like Warren said, we used to bring our water up from the older 7th and 8th graders would bring the water up from Russell's folks who lived down below beside the school. He was a farmer. And that, I've, I think I've got some pictures of the barn of that. The people that live there now, they've been there for a number of years, but he, Kathy met him swimming at the academy, <clears throat> and he wants me to go down and talk, to show him what the house used to be. But I'm sure it's changed terribly, mm -hmm. and the barn's gone, but. Like so many. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you ever have Winnie, did you ever have Winnie Mouse out in the field somewhere? Yeah, we did um, once a year, especially when uh, hot dogs and corn, corn roast. That was a big thing at the end of the year. We had a big bonfire out in the pasture. And yeah, that was fun. And when you say the end of the year, do you mean what, around harvest time? Or yeah, or in the fall. In the fall. Yeah, before, okay. after the corn. And right. Who, who would come? Oh, we had, of course, my sister and her husband and his brother, his mother and father. They were quite close to us. And so it's family party. Yeah, more. I don't. Now, Hazel Simpson, we used to have Sugar and Off, too. And Hazel remembers coming to Sugar and Off. I don't. I know we Sugar and Off, but I didn't. And. She said, oh, she like, loved that. <laughs> Something went through my mind. <laughs> Any other events that I'm you can think of like, like that? Like, did you sell, how did you celebrate Christmas or Thanksgiving? Or yeah, Thanksgiving we'd have um, the family mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Thackon, my brother-in-law's folks, and um, I don't think we had any other. So on Christmas we were by ourselves mostly, and and uh, we'll see Uncle Con would come up with their children, and they after they'd had their stockings, and I do remember going to um, South Rygate when I was a kid. My aunt, my aunt died when I was nine, but I remember going down a long trip south right down Route Five, and and then on had to go outside of South Right Gate to where they lived on a farm. <clears throat> 
one year. I, Mom might have taken the cake with us. I don't know, but it was my birthday. And it probably was around Thanksgiving. And I remember Aunt Bertha went into the, her pantry and she came out carrying the cake. I, I remember that. I'll bet. Yeah. yeah. But, but I, I remember going down a lot. And her kids were a lot older than me, but we got later years we've gotten together. They're both dead now, but that was a long haul with that old car. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I wish I could think of some other things. Well, I guess I was going to say, uh, my brother-in-law's niece lived with his folks because his, her mother died young. So she was brought up by her grandmother, and she'd come up to visit because she was about my age. She'd come up and visit. First thing she wanted to do was win the barn. She loved cattle. She loved the band, and I couldn't care less. <laughs> but I'd go in with her, and when I went down to her house, they lived on Main Street, and it was elite, elite street then. So I enjoyed that. <laughs> but and then she, and I knew she'd marry a farmer, and sure enough, she did. Yep. She should have her cows. She, yeah, oh, they had a Goodrich's. Farm up and down. Uh, Sally? Cat. Yeah, Sally. Sally, I knew her. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Um, she says, I never knew that I was going to be in use. <laughs> I, I said, well, I did. <laughs> yeah, registered he uh, jerseys. Oh, yeah, jerseys. Yeah. yeah, the son's taking it over now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she and Walt are retired. Oh, they're retired? Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen her for a few years. She. She would like to um, go in the band some, but her son's wife says no. Well, she's a pilot. She she taught she did she she, she to fly. yeah she doesn't anymore. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, Sally. Sally. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it was so much fun to have her because she was my age and liked to do what I liked to do. Go up to Joel's Pond. They had a camp on Joel's Pond. I'd go up there. That was fun. Must have taken you a while to get there. I I usually rode. Her grandfather was president of the some, uh, Citizens Bank, Union Bank now. So I'd get down to that the bank, and then he'd take me up. And then in the morning, when I after I'd been there. My sister had a camp up there too. It was their camp, but they would let them use it. And uh, so then I'd ride back the next morning, or whatever morning that I, I'd stay up probably a week. Yes. Because back then the cars were getting more sophisticated. <laughs> You brought some pictures, and I wondered if you could just go through and name some of the um, the people in the Mintonia. Okay. Is it in front of the school? This is Hastings School, okay. and, and this is a picture of my oldest sister. And they were having a play, I believe, because one of the boys is dressed in a dress. <laughs> And this little guy, he had a um, tire that to roll. And that's, I can't remember his first name, but now his last name's gone from me. Um, Did you say Ward? Ward, yeah. And this is Ruth Rowland Hastings. She married Robinson. Mm. I th that's um, Madeline Ward, I believe. 
This is my sister. Which one? The one. I mean, which sister? Oh, um, Lucille. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lucille. And Danny Rich. I don't know who this one is, but this is my other sister, Madge. She was just a little thing. <laughs> this picture here was taken when I was in school. This is Howard Eastman, Janice Simpson, I think her name was, no relation, Mickey Glowen, Russell's half-brother, Dick Glander, Hazel Simpson, Hilda, oh, I can't think, she married Cushman, and myself in back, hiding, and Mrs. Sullivan, oh, she was a wonderful teacher. She was such a sweetheart. And she, I learned more from her in the two years she was there than I learned the whole school. Yeah. Was she the one that left in the middle of the year? No. Oh, that's a different one. No, yeah. And she, um, all the teachers that lived away boarded at Simpson's, and she lived in Gill Hall. And she'd come over and stay the week, and she had a big, I understand she had a big family. And her husband, the way I understood it, was he got burned, really badly burned, so he couldn't work. So she had to support the family. I never have... I always wanted to go see her, but I never did. Of course, she's long gone now. But when I see Sullivan, I wonder if it's any relation. But and the schoolhouse, of course, been made into a house now. Well, Vivian, we thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Uh, we're going to just put this on pause, which means that the interview doesn't have to be over. And if you think of something that you want to say, we'll just put it back on record. Okay. okay. So thank you very much. Mm.